In this table, I have 11 S&P 500 ETS for our comparison. So strap on tight and let's begin. Hey, what is up guys? If you are looking to invest into the US market, then you must have come across the S&P 500 index, which is arguably the most popular index representing the average of the US economy. So to help your research, I've made this video to summarize the key things that you need to take note of when you invest into any of the S&P 500 ETFs, especially if you are a non-US citizen. This video will be segmented into the following. Firstly, I will give you an overview of the S&P 500 index. Next, I will talk about the taxes involved with US domiciled ETFs. Next, I will explain to you some key terminologies that you need to know such as the expense ratio, the base trading currency, the accumulating versus distributing ETFs, trading volume, and spread. Then I will compare what I think are the top 11 S&P 500 ETFs and give you a short list of my top Ireland domiciled S&P 500 ETFs. And last but not least, I will also give you my final verdict on which S&P 500 ETF that I personally prefer. And just before we begin, help me smack the like button down below. It means the world to me. Thank you, thank you very much. And without further ado, let's jump right into today's content. Let's start off with a quick overview of the S&P 500 index. The index tracks 500 of the largest public listed companies in the United States by way of market capitalization. Among the 500, the top holdings include huge names such as Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Alphabet, which is Google, Facebook, Tesla, and etc. The historical performance of the index have been stellar, having a one-year return of 18.4%, three years return of 14.18%, five years return of 15.22%, and 10 years return of 13.88%, making this one of the most beloved must-have investment in any portfolio. And this is also one of the world's most famous benchmark for any investor's portfolio. Have your portfolio beaten the S&P 500 index? Anyways, back to the topic. As a non-US resident, there are a few things that you need to know before you jump your gun into any S&P 500 ETF that you can find on Google. Firstly, let's talk about the tax implications. If you want to invest in the popular S&P 500 ETFs that you can find on Google, such as VOO, IVV, and SPY, then you will need to know that they are all US domiciled ETFs, or in another word, based in the United States. That means you will be imposed a few taxes by the United States government because you are effectively owning assets in the US. The first tax is the dividend withholding tax. Yes, if you are a non-US resident, any dividends paid by US domiciled ETFs or companies to you will be withheld by 30%. For example, if the US ETFs pays you $100 of dividends, then you are only effectively receiving $70 of it. A small little exception here, if you are from countries that has a tax treaty benefit with the United States, then your withholding tax will be reduced by a little bit. However, if you are from country that does not have tax treaty with the United States, such as me from Malaysia, then you can also go around this by investing in Ireland domiciled S&P 500 ETFs. ETFs. And surprisingly, they have a very similar if not equal performance to their US counterparts. With Island Domicile ETFs, since they have a tax treaty with the United States, your dividends will only be effectively withheld by 15%. One way to illustrate this is by showing you how the dividend withholding tax works. Firstly, you have Island Domicile S&P 500 ETFs in the Ireland. When the US companies pay 100 US dollars of dividends, it will be withheld by 15% before it reaches the Ireland. Fund. And for the most part of the world, since there is a double treaty agreement in place between your country and Ireland, you will be receiving 85 US dollars of dividends, and that is effectively 15% of tax savings on your dividends. The second tax that you need to be aware of is the US estate tax. If for whatever reason, Tashwood, you pass away, Tashwood then the US government will impose 40% of tax on your assets if your assets are worth 60,000 US dollars and above. To overcome this, again, instead of the US domicile ETFs, we can choose to invest in Ireland domicile ETFs, which then you will not be imposed by the inheritance or US estate tax, as long as you don't own any property in Ireland. And nope, there are no capital gain tax imposed onto non-US residents for the sale of any Ireland or US domicile ETFs and stocks, so you don't have to worry about that. 
that. Next, there are a few terminologies that I want to quickly cover to give you a better picture of everything. And the first one is expense ratio and this is essentially the fees that you pay to the manager managing the S&P 500 ETF. The traditional US domicile S&P 500 ETFs usually charge a pretty low expense ratio of around 0.03% whereas the island domicile S&P 500 ETFs usually charge about 0.07% of expense ratio. So there is quite a disadvantage for the island domicile S&P 500 ETFs. But just because it is cheaper on the US counterpart does not necessarily means that it is better to go for the US based ETFs. You still need to weigh in the benefits from the cost savings with the dividend withholding tax to derive your net expense. The net expense matters a lot for index investing because over the years, the net expense will compound and eat into your return. And most of the time, if not all the time, it is always better to go for the island domicile S&P 500 ETFs because yes, although you are paying about 0.04% more of expense ratio, but you are also saving about 0.7% of annual dividends from the S&P 500 ETFs. So effectively, you are better off by around 0.6 to 0.65% if you went with the island domicile ETFs. The second thing that you need to know here is the base trading currency. And for now, to make things simple, we will just focus on the two exchange offering the S&P 500 ETF, which are the New York Stock Exchange in the US and the London Stock Exchange in the UK. The S&P 500 ETFs in the US only offers US dollars as the base trading currency. Whereas for the island domicile S&P 500 ETFs listed on the London Stock Exchange, they offer both US dollars and Great Britain pounds. Their performance are largely identical. So it boils down to your own personal preference whether you prefer US dollars or Great Britain pound moving forward. Obviously, having either US dollars or the pound as your trading currency means you are essentially taking foreign currency risks in either of them. The third thing that you need to know is how the S&P 500 ETF handle the dividend, either accumulating or distributing. For example, let's look at the two island domicile S&P 500 ETFs offered by iShares. If you notice at the end of their names, they have a bracket indicating DIST and ACC. DIST is a short term for distributing whereby the fund will be distributing dividends as cash to the investors usually every 3 months. Whereas for ACC, it is the short term for accumulating whereby the fund will accumulate and reinvest the dividends for the investors automatically. So depending on your preference, if you like cash flow from dividends, then go for the ETFs ending with DIST. But if you are like me and you like the fund to reinvest the dividends for you, then consider going with the ETF ending with ACC. In terms of performance, both are identical pre-tax, but post-tax there will be a slight difference, but it shouldn't be a deal breaker. Just another thing to add here, all US domicile ETFs are distributing in nature only because they are required by the tax regulations to distribute 90% of their net investment income. So you can only find ETFs with the accumulating trade in the island domicile ones because they can reinvest the dividends for you as they do not need to comply with such dividend distribution requirement. The final thing that you need to know is the trading volume and spread. For the US domicile S&P 500 ETFs, they usually have a substantially higher assets under management, making their trading volume much, much higher than the island domicile ones. And as a result, the spread between the bid and ask price will be much smaller for the US domicile ones. So what's the big deal with higher spread, right? Well, with higher spread between the bid and ask price, this essentially means that you need to buy the ETF at a premium price or sell them at a discounted price. If you are investing for the long term, then this shouldn't matter to you. But if you are frequently trading the S&P 500 ETFs, then consider going for the one with higher liquidity i.e. higher trading volume. Alright, with all of that out of the way, let's jump right into our comparison table. In this table, I have 11 S&P 500 ETFs for our comparison. So strap on tight and let's begin. On the left hand side, we have 3 S&P 500 ETFs domiciled in the United States, namely VOO, IVV and SPY. They are easily the largest and most popular S&P 500 ETF. And from the middle to the right hand side, we have 8 island domiciled S&P 500 ETFs. Four of them are managed by iShares, by BlackRock, and another four of them are managed by Vanguard. Now, I know there are a lot more S&P 500 ETFs offered by some other funds such as Invesco, 
Shrub and Fidelity. But those usually come with issues like being synthetic funds, i.e. not holding actual physical stocks, or they trade in Euro, which then exposes you to a lot of currency risk, or they are only tracking part of the S&P 500 index, which is not really what we want. We want them to track the entire S&P 500 index. So for starters, going with iShares or Vanguard will do you just fine. Alright, let's quickly run through the US domicile S&P 500 ETFs. As I've mentioned before, the trading currency is in US dollar and all three of them are listed on the New York Stock Exchange. For expense ratio, both the VOO and IVV stands at 0.03% with the SPY charging 0.09% which is three times higher than its peers. This is because SPY has a much higher total net assets and it is very very liquid having a trading volume of 82.3 million compared to the other two, making SPY the much preferred peer for frequent traders. But for buy and hold investors like me, or if you consider yourself one, then it is a no-brainer to go for the ETS with a lower expense ratio, in this case, the VOO and IVV. In terms of dividend yield, 1.5% and it will be distributed quarterly as mentioned earlier. So that was a quick look into US domicile S&P 500 ETFs. Now, since it is more economical tax-wise for us, none US residents to invest in island domicile S&P 500 ETFs, I will focus on those instead. Alright, now we are left with the island based S&P 500 ETFs, 4 iShares on the left and 4 Vanguards on the right. At a very high level, they are largely the same except for a few differences. Firstly, dividend handling, they are either distributing or accumulating. Second, trading currency, either in Great Britain Pound or US dollar. Thirdly, unit price. This is where they start to differ. Right off the bat, the 30k Great Britain Pound for CSP1 is pretty much out of the league for most of us, so I'll leave it out. I'm also leaving out IUSA which costs 2,977 Great Britain Pound per unit, which is not dollar cost friendly at all. And that leaves us with the other options which range from 40 US dollar to 415 US dollar. Of course, the lower share price will be much friendlier when it comes to monthly or bi-monthly investing, but try not to buy too little else the brokerage fee will eat into a return. Back to the table, in terms of average trading volume, the distributing ETFs have a much higher volume compared to the accumulating ETFs. This makes the spread between the bid and ask price for the distributing ETFs much smaller. However, the downside to this is, with distributing ETFs, it is not as passive since you are receiving the dividends every quarterly. So this is totally up to your own personal preference, whether you prioritize the low trading spread of distributing ETFs or the passiveness of the accumulating funds. At the end of the day, their performance are identical. So this is totally up to your personal preference, whether you prioritize the low trading spread of the distributing ETFs or you prioritize the passiveness of the accumulating funds. At the end of the day, their performance are identical. So having done the comparison, I will shortlist 8 of them into 2 of my personal preference, which is the CSPX and VUAA accumulating funds. Now as to why I choose these two funds. First of all, I prefer to have the ETF reinvest the dividend itself so that I can buy and forget about it. And to me, that's the point of index investing. I wouldn't be bothered to look at it or reinvest the dividends myself. Reason number 2, I personally prefer the US dollars over the Great Britain Pound because I think that the US dollars will be relatively stronger than the pound. And on top of that, I'm already trading with US dollars in my brokerage account. So that is one less hassle for me to convert my currency. But this is really just my personal preference. Some of you might prefer pound over the US dollars and there's nothing wrong with that. Now as to my own final verdict, although CSPX is much pricier than VUAA in terms of per unit cost, CXPX does come with a much higher liquidity and lower trading spread, making it slightly, just slightly more attractive in my personal opinion. And as I have said earlier, it is always better to invest a higher amount each time to minimize the impact from the brokerage fee. That said, if it wasn't obvious already, my personal choice will be CXPX to invest into the S&P 500 index. But really, you won't go wrong with either of them, they are both equally as good. So having gone through all of that, what do you think? Which S&P 500 ETF do you prefer? Let me know in the comments section down below. Anyways, before I wrap up, I know I will get a lot of questions on this. If you want to invest into CSPX or any island domicile ETFs, then you will need an international broker that can invest into the London Stock Exchange. And for me, I will be using interactive brokers or to be exact the trade station global interactive brokers to do just that i have previously made a video on how to open a trade station global interactive brokers account i will leave it up on the top right corner so feel free to go and check it out all right with all of that said i hope you find this video informative and if you did help me smack the like button down below and subscribe if you haven't already and that will mean the world to me okay thank you very much for watching stay safe stay invested and as usual i will see you
in the next one.